turning pain to power for purpose. One of the interesting things I've come to realize is that when I do interviews, if I just do an interview and say, oh, we, are, we have built in the prison, people will say, oh, very good. But if I begin to share the pain that I once went through, and I know some of you have watched my interviews. And that is when you began to feel you can connect with me. And people usually meet me on the streets and they say, that interview that you did with Lynn Googie, that interview that you did on this station touched my life. I could connect with you. And the most beautiful part is, is that you changed your pain to be a story to encourage others. And one of the interesting things I've begun to see even as I read about leaders, they have stories of great pain. I was listening to a psychologist, he's called Dr. Peterson, and he was saying everything we need in life, in even science form, is in us. It's in our DNA. When we even talk about our purpose, people say, I am discovering their purpose. They feel like their purpose is out there. But everything you need is actually inside you. If you've ever had a vision that you're meant to be a president, believe me, everything you need to become president is not a good campaign manager. It is inside you. When you were born, God put it in you even before he entered you into to your mother's womb and so one of the interesting things that you begin to see about man that the scientist was saying is that everything we need is inside us and pain a lot of times pushes what we are meant to be it pushes it out it pushes out our power and we realize that after a very painful time in our life we have this victory and after that, authority that we never knew we had. I'm a very shy person. The reason why I am able to stand up and preach and talk about God is because of the pain that we went through together. And the victory that I have has made me know there is a God. And I can stand anywhere and tell people there is a God. Me, I know God. My people made me a t-shirt called Me, I Know God. I know God personally. And so one of the things that I want us to begin to understand is pain. And we see even in scripture when God was creating the world that actually pain and trials was not God's idea. It was not his plan. Pain came the first time when man fell. And we see this even in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Also Deuteronomy 32 4. I'm going to ask Pastor Angie to just open Genesis 131 and she will read it for us and then also Deuteronomy 32 4 I will ask Minister Maureen to just open Deuteronomy 32 4 and you will read it for us and so we see when God was creating the world he looked at everything and he could see it was perfect it was beautiful and you can tell even right now as much as we fell when you look out, you can see the trees, the green, and it's so beautiful. That was the perfect plan of God. And sometimes I see when people go through pain, they say, why has God deserted me? Why would God put me through this pain? But pain was never the original plan of God. Genesis 1.31 Genesis 1.31 Then God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. So evening and the morning were the sixth day. So the creation of God was very beautiful. Minister Maureen, as we can see in scripture, everything was perfect and beautiful. I'll read from the New King James Passion, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4. He is the rock, his work is perfect. For all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice. Righteousness and upright is he. Amen, amen. And so when man sinned, the story of Adam and Eve that we know very well, pain came into the world. And to note is that even as pain was coming into the world, 
God had a plan. He didn't say, Adam, look at what you have done. I'm going to just let you go. God decided that he still wanted to have a relationship with Adam. He came down immediately, clothed Adam and promised him Jesus Christ. But then he let them know because of sin, they will toil. And even told Eve, there will be pain in your life because of sin. And any time we go through pain, we should always remember it was not the original plan of God. We fell. But even as we fell, God decided that everything the enemy wants to do in your life, if you allow him, he will change it to be a miracle. He will change it to be a testimony. And there is a verse that I love that took me through the darkest period of my life. Romans 5 verse 3 to 5. Romans 5 verse 3 to 5. And this is a verse that I pray you will always remember. It says not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces what? Perseverance. Perseverance produces what? And character produces what? And hope does not put us to shame because God's love had been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. One of the things I see when people are going through a difficult time, they tell me, just pray that there will be no shame in my life. If you understand who God is, you know God will never allow shame in your life. And you understand that even though you're going through a difficult time, you're producing perseverance and you're building character and that your pain cannot be wasted. And it should never be wasted. Don't allow it to be wasted. In fact, Paul anticipates when he was talking to them, Paul was anticipating that yes, in your life, there will be difficult times. But we also glory in those difficult times. And actually when he was talking about tribulations, it's a very strong term. He was not just telling them you're going to have challenges. Sometimes people say don't call it a problem. Call it a challenge. But Paul was very, and always when you read his scripture, Paul alikuwa anataka ku break it down as it is. Vile mambo iko kwa ground. And so he said tribulations, used a strong term to let them know that there will be tribulations in your life. Unfortunately, sometimes I see that even when people have not prayed to understand what they are going through, they begin to say there is an attack in my life anything happens it's an attack but Paul says it there will be tribulations there will be inconveniences there is going to be real hardships in our life and Paul actually when you read as much as Paul was such a powerful strong man of God we saw the tribulations that Paul went through but Paul continued to serve the Lord continue to expand the kingdom of God because he knew and was prepared tribulations will come in 2024 you better know tribulations will come but Paul began to understand that these tribulations don't just happen to me God allows them to happen in my life for a reason and Paul understood that these tribulations would produce perseverance Therefore, we can glory in tribulations because it is an occasion. It is actually an opportunity for you to produce perseverance, for you to produce endurance. And one of the things that you realize in life, even as he was using that word, perseverance, endurance, he was using it because he knew life, this life that we are living is a race. And you must have endurance. It is possible in January to have great testimonies, even as we are fasting. But do you have the endurance? 
to move on throughout 2024 to stand with God during tribulations Paul understood that God uses tribulations in a wonderful way in our life to bring out who he has called us to be and therefore perseverance character character and hope and actually this is a golden chain of Christian growth and maturity because one virtue builds another as we grow into the pattern of Jesus Christ and most one of the things that we have to realize as children of God is that even if you have the gifts and your character is not good you're wasting that gift one of the things even as we teach the prophetic classes to tell people you would rather have the maturity the character seek for that that we will see the fruit of the Holy Spirit through you because you're grown you're a mature Christian and you will notice the interesting thing when you go through pain go back to the fruit of the Holy Spirit you will begin to see you are beginning to have all the patterns of the Holy Ghost they take you back there. Any problem, if you want to pass a test, whatever you're going through, just tell God, Baba, this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I want to have patience. I want to be kind. What I am going through will make me look like you, Baba. Perseverance, character, and character hope brings out growth and maturity. And what virtue builds upon another as we grow in the pattern of Jesus. And so we realize that even as Jesus was going through a great test, he also had the same understanding. And I suspect Paul actually learned this from Jesus Christ. And we look at Jesus as he was about to die on the cross and him being God he probably knew how difficult it was going to be how painful it was going to be in Matthew chapter 26 verse 36 Matthew 26 verse 36 Jesus gives us the formula of what to do when we are in great pain Paul has given us the understanding and Paul has given us the reassurance of whatever we are going through, it will build our character. And in the midst of Jesus knowing that in a few hours he will be stripped of his clothes, he will be embarrassed in front of everyone, he was going to go through physical pain and torture. And Jesus is the best example because Jesus had not sinned. Jesus did not deserve what he was about to go through. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. Jesus had just had the last supper with his disciples. One of the things we see about Jesus during his difficult time, he did not desert the gathering of the brethren. And a lot of times when we're going through problems, we want to desert people. You probably hear during Rig as we are having our prayers every day at nine, people giving testimonies. And you're like, people will not understand my problem. Look at the testimonies they are giving. Or you're like, I have been giving this same prayer request over and over and over again. People will begin to wonder what is going on with this brethren. Work on the same prayer request. Kill a week. Niombeni, niombeni. The same prayer request. And so sometimes we are tempted to stay away. And that is usually the plan of the enemy to begin to separate you from your fellow brethren. And Jesus understood that even though he was Jesus, most powerful, he needed the disciples. And so Jesus calls them and says, let us go and pray. 
and taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to sorrowfully, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. In the time that you're going through a difficult time and you're feeling that you are alone, I want you to always remember Jesus on his knees. He was troubled. And sometimes we want to tell people that in our difficult times, we cannot show pain. We need to be strong in the Lord and give verses, testimonies. The Lord is going to do it. I know the Lord is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. Hey, we are strong. We are strong. But there is a time in our life where we have to go on our knees and open up to Baba and say, this thing, Baba, is hard. And Jesus was sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful. Even to death, remain here and watch with me. When your soul is troubled and sorrowful, do you have people to remain with you? To stand with you? Minister Angie, do you have? I was with you on Friday praying. I have a team that I really love that when we I'm in trouble even in the middle of the day and thank you so much Dr. until very late 10 o'clock thank you forgive us forgiveness but I have a team of people who whenever we are in trouble even during the day I just go to the WhatsApp group. I'm like, you people, I need 10 minutes of prayer. And then someone usually shares a link. It is usually not the person in trouble. Somebody else quickly shares a link. And we meet and we begin to pray together. And a lot of times, even as we are praying, the answer comes. And I find that so powerful to have a group of people that you can always call upon. See prophet too. And your leaders have a team of people that you can always call upon that you're checking upon and you stand together and you believe that when we come together and speak a word that word shall come to pass and I love that group because my work is to always check are they growing spiritually because I know at 3pm I need those women I need those women Okay, okay, sawa. And so Jesus understood, and Jesus was God, but he understood I need people to stand with me. And Jesus understood as he was even praying that he had to be open with his father and tell God the truth of what he was truly going through. Never be afraid. One of the things that I have been going through even as I was um thinking about this sermon is that I've had a difficult time when we did the 484 kilometers and I have been going through a very challenging time spiritually, emotionally and there is a point a lot of times when a transition is happening that it feels like God has left you and I felt it when we were doing the 100 days and I was so sick the last three days and in those last three days I didn't hear the voice of God the Holy Spirit came, he comforted me, I didn't hear God and for many days I was so angry with God and the Lord allowed us to have that conversation and even recently after this 484 walk, I just told God, I feel like you take me to go do your work. And in the midst of it, you leave me when I need you the most. When everything is dark, you have followed what the assignment God has given you. You're going through so many spiritual things, emotional things, and it goes dark. And it reminded me that even Jesus Christ, there was a period, it was dark for him. And before that, he had opened up and told God. And he even says, I am sorrowful. And going a little further, he fell 
on his face and prayed saying, My father, if be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. In the middle of God's assignment, there are many times we will want to tell God. And I don't know why, I, I just feel in the spirit that there are people here really praying for their spouse. That things in their marriage are not right. That marriage is your assignment. And to continue to stay and to pray. As you're being hurt and knowing very well you have done everything that God has asked you to do is not easy. There is someone who right now is going through a very difficult time in their office and they are wondering, should I quit God? Why should I go through this? Why should I continue to stay? You have asked me to stay, but it is so difficult. And it is okay to go to God and say, this assignment is hard. This assignment I cannot do. And you can imagine Jesus on the face of the ground. There is a point sometimes when you are praying. It is so heavy. You can't sit. You can't kneel. You are so hopeless. You just lie on the ground and you completely surrender to God. And you even know after you are crying, to even stand up again will need his strength. And there are prayers that we make and we ask God, until when, oh God? Until when? This assignment is hard, Baba. But the beautiful thing at the place of prayer with your fellow brethren is the perfect place to be. It is the point where you are promised victory. It is the point where as you are praying, your character is being built. Many times people come and they say, I need deliverance. My deliverance, I always share, was done privately in my bedroom for many months praying crying out to the Lord fasting in that time my character was being built and when I tell people come for prayers I really know what deliverance looks like and after those months I now have the authority to speak and take people through deliverance as you're lying on the ground and praying, I promise you, your character is being built. There is an authority coming over you. In fact, begin to tell God, this problem that I am seeing today, one thing that I know, as I am staying in this place of prayer, hurting, you are building me to have authority over it. It will never trouble me again. It will never trouble my family again. I will not stay here praying and saying, why me, Baba? And for a lot of you, I have been seeing this thing that the Lord has been saying. I want to take people in rig through deliverance and especially poverty we don't preach by the way all the time Uto and your mungu akupe. I don't believe in it I believe that when there are cycles in your life there is something else speaking more than the sacrifice that you are giving and sometimes that sacrifice is to say, yes, God, this thing ahead of me is difficult, but I will stay here and learn. Teach me the prayers that I need at this time. I remember one time there is a neighbor of mine who came home, my mom's neighbor, and told my mom, please tell, ask your daughter to pray for my child. Um, actually, she called my mom and said ask your daughter to pray for my child my daughter my child is in ICU right now and so I wanted to sleep I was tired the whole day I prayed for people and the Lord, then the Lord says I want you to stay up and pray I was like oh God I'm tired tomorrow is a long day and then the Holy Spirit told me there is an authority that God wants to give you stay in that place sacrifice so I called the mother I said uh, I'm the Holy Spirit has asked me to pray until something breaks. That 
That is why Jesus was on the floor. He decided he will pray until something breaks. And so I started to pray. I didn't even know what I was going to pray. I said, let me go on Google. What do you pray when a child is in ICU? I was just saying prayers, words. I was like, no, this cannot remove a child from ICU. And God had told me this child must come out of ICU tonight. And so I just allowed the Holy Spirit to lead me. And I said, yes, Baba, I will stay here until something breaks. And so the Holy Spirit began to teach me how to speak life and told me that day that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he resurrected, that same resurrection power is in you. Speak over that child. And he took me to the hospital and I saw other children and I was just speaking life over them. I stayed in prayer every hour sending the mother scripture saying the Lord is saying this. The Lord is saying this. And eventually after five hours Hours, the Holy Spirit told me you can wake up that child will leave and I saw a vision of the child three years old playing in front of their house and I called the mother I said guess what I have seen your child playing at three years he was going to not go beyond uh, one year old one year old I said I saw your child three years so I know it has been broken your son will live and will do the work of God Guess what? That day, I received authority over death by staying in the place of prayer. And I realized actually that God was doing me a favor. There's something that God wanted to place in my life. The sorrow, the pain that you're going through, there is something that God wants to bath through you. There is a power that God carries and now he wants you to share with him to carry. We always say, may the glory of God be seen through me. Can you pay the price? Can you agree with God that I'm not going to pray over this thing, always asking why me God? Why me God? But to say, Baba, may your will be done. And so Jesus knowing that even in a few hours he will be embarrassed stayed in the place of prayer. He said my father if this cannot pass actually let me go back a bit and he says again for the second time he went away and prayed my father if this cannot pass unless I drink it your will be done. Your will be done. And even when Jesus, and this is something interesting, he would go back and check on his disciples. What were they doing sleeping? I want to tell you something. A lot of times when the Lord is entering us a new dimension, you will feel very alone because people will not understand. When I was doing the work for a long time, the walk, for a long time, even when I came back, I couldn't talk to people. Even until now, people keep on asking me on my birthday, some of you threw a party and they're like, tell us how the walk was. Until now, I'm unable to completely break it down. I felt so alone. And even if I feel, I feel like if I explain to people, you will not understand my pain. You'll just tell me you are a strong woman, God be with you. So I'm like, I can't share. And I've come to realize every time when God is entering us a new dimension, you will have friends to stand with you, but there is a place where you will have to stand alone and know God alone. And Jesus had the disciples who loved him, but guess what? They had enjoyed that dinner that Jesus at Awange Semaaki Jesus Ibash Ilikuwa Poa Asanti Sana. Let us go. We stand with you. You have taught us for three years and begin to say, Jesus, you taught us this scripture. Let me begin to speak. That is what was expected. He taught them. They saw miracles at that time when Jesus needed them the most. He resurrected their friends, their family members. But at that time, what were they doing? Sleeping. Usikasirikia watu kama watasimama na wewe vile you feel you need it. Just know you are entering a place of promotion that God has chosen you for that place of promotion. And there is a place he wants to enter 
encounter with you personally that you will know him in a way you have never known him before and all you need to say is that God I will do this work I say yes and so Jesus continued to see his people sleeping and he even says in verse 44 so leaving them again he went away and prayed for the third time saying the same words then he came to the disciples and said to them sleep and take your rest later on see the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners rise let us be going see my betrayer is at hand Jesus prayed prayed alipata breakthrough and sometimes the breakthrough we want is not the breakthrough that God will give us. I believe the breakthrough that he got was to finally see the picture of what God was going to do on the third day. And he could clearly see that his betrayer was coming. And he told them, now let us wake up. He had the strength to finish his prayer and even tell others, let us wake up. My betrayer is here. And he understood that the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. And it was time for him to rise up to be betrayed. To be killed. How many can rise up and say, Baba, I know this meeting that I am going. People are going to spit on me. People are going to remove my clothes. People are going to put me on the cross for things that I have not done. And you even encourage others. Abu tu amuke tuende tufanya ikazi ya mungu. Knowing even Peter will deny you. How many of us can see through the pain. But see what God will do on the third day. And even when the breakthrough prayers that you are seeking. Do not go exactly as you want. Can you stick to the purpose of why God brought you on earth. Jesus understood that his time on earth had come to an end and that it was time to ensure that you and I, and the unfortunate thing is that when we're going through pain, I don't know why I ask God, the pain that I always share about in Uganda, that pain is what birthed rig east africa it was not for me and when i started to walk in the prophetic when i was in uganda i would prophesy over people it helps others mimi i would go pray for people the lord is bringing a car i see a car i have walked 10 kilometers to their house nikimaliza wananizindikisha I'm walking. I'm, I'm like, oh, he pain. I'm going through, Baba. To bless people with a car, I am walking back home. Baka, sometimes I'll tell God, give them that car quickly, wasi doubt. Because they must be doubting. We are not to bless Nagari na anatembea. Eh? What is really going on? And I realize that this pain that we go through, don't always think about, after this, this is for me. Understand that God is building your character to do as Jesus did. It was for the world. And so we see that Jesus goes to that cross. And I will not go into the details of the story of the cross. But we all know on the third day he resurrected. And actually he went to hell and picked the keys and let me tell you something if you've ever gone through deep pain everybody knows the day they went and they picked the keys and they told Satan you have no say in my family from today I end the curse of poverty everybody I know the day I broke things in my family and that area Satan can never ever touch in my family again everybody knows the third day after you turn 
prayed in prayer and you went and you took the authority that place comes after staying in the place of prayer after reading scripture having an understanding of why you are going through pain and on the day you understand that that pain is to build your character so that God can use you to carry his power and expand his kingdom is the day you receive the key and that is the problem that sometimes we do not want to stay. You want prophet to lay a hand on you. Prophet, sometimes I tell people, can we please and pray and fast over this issue? Someone tells you I have this problem. Please just lay your hands and be delivered. And you ask them, what is the real problem? What does God want you to conquer? What authority and power does God want to give you? They have no answer. So what are we praying about? What will this pain do? This pain that you have gone through, how will it benefit men? What book can you write after you've gone through that test that will change the world? And, and let me tell you, there are many opportunities that we are missing because we do not understand why God allows pain in our life. There are books here that can be written. There are movies here that you can sell that people will watch and cry and their lives be changed and recommend to their friends, go watch that movie. What I saw, what I experienced changed my life in an instant. And we miss so many opportunities when we do not understand pain. That day, if Christ wanted, he would have said, Baba, I cannot do this assignment. Mimi si kukua na Adam. Hiyo ni shida ya Adam na Eve. You can see ata hawa pita ni mewasaidia. Three years hawaski. Wamelala. Mimi tu mawio angel anipeleke mbinguni. By the way, angeenda tu. But we would not have salvation today. Satan would still be ruling us. And so this thing that you are going through, it is crucial that we understand that you have to turn that pain into power, into purpose. Anytime when people come and someone says they are going through something, this week I was talking to someone who in their family, the men go through early death. And when she first, uh, she first came by bringing a sacrifice that God brought, told her to bring. And at first I was like, God, I cannot take this sacrifice. But then the Lord began to reveal what their family was going through. And when the Lord revealed, the Lord reminded me, in that place of pain, I gave you the authority to handle this problem. And so with that woman, we began to pray. And their life has never been the same again. Why? Because I understood my pain was giving me power for a greater purpose. I guess our children have come to remind us, Nisa <laughs> Yakwenda Nyumbani. And because this is a family church, we will oblige. Even as you are thinking about your pain, I want you to even think about 1 Corinthians, I will just read it for you, 15 to 26, chapter 15 verse 26, the last enemy to be destroyed was death, destroyed by Jesus. It took him to accept pain, to say yes let your will be done. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. And every time we go through pain, we need to understand Jesus destroyed death. And every problem that we face, Jesus guaranteed us victory. Death was swallowed in victory. Every pain, every challenge in your life 
was swallowed at the cross and ours is to follow the pattern of Jesus Christ and to ensure that every person around us will be touched because of the pain that you went through the power that you received during that time of pain and your acceptance to live according to the purpose that God has given you a lot of times people will say one day a prophet spoke about me they said I am a great healer someone says one day a prophet spoke about me a vision God showed me that I am a kingdom financier why is it not happening because when the pain has come character building has come you have said no let my will be done Baba your will we will do another day I will look for a prophet to lay hands on me and then we can perhaps touch on your will and in this year where God has said and it's very important that we go back to the prophetic word that God has spoken about this year that he wants to pour his power on us like never before for Jesus Christ to have the power to go to hell, he had to completely submit to the will of God, die on the cross. And even when God himself turned away from him and could not look at the sin that Jesus was carrying, he continued with the assignment and got the key, the victory for you. And right now, he is sitting at the right hand side of God. And the call upon us today is to say yes to his will and to follow through. At the end of three months, will you still be the same person? Or will you be more like God, carrying his power and glory? And we are here at Uzuri Zasa Hata Tuko Wadogo. Tutakua tunawanana, tunajuana. We can see January, we are liquid to papo hapo. February, Allah, March, the power of God to kwetu na ulizana. Unasama yes to the assignment. Unabeba hii kitu. And for some of you, I can see you are carrying this big cha challenge as a family. Because there is something mighty that God wants to do through your family. All he needs is for you to say yes. I have been seeing this thing in the spirit and I'm being open to it because God was saying I know people expect that when they see an apostle he should just be carrying certain gifts I've been seeing a hybrid of apostles and workers of God they carry interesting gifts I've never that hybrid I've never seen before and the Lord was saying it is because there are certain men who are saying yes to and my power will come upon them like never before. In fact, God was saying this is the time where Jesus Christ said that we will do more than him. We are in that time right now. But the same way we want to do more than Jesus, will you say yes? Will you carry the cross and completely submit to God even in your time? Brothers and sisters, I know our pain looks different. It might be someone who right now is thinking, I don't know how my children will see their school term this year. It might be someone be getting a hard time in the office. It might be someone going through a sickness. It might be someone who is going through a difficult time with their relatives. And as I am saying these things, it is things I am seeing that people are going through. It might be someone who has been crying for a breakthrough in their family and it doesn't look like. It is someone saying, Baba, there is a place that I've been wanting to enter in the spiritual realm, but I am not going through. It is someone praying for healing for their mother. It is pain that you have been feeling in your heart. That when you think about it, wherever you are seated, pain and just tears begin to flow. 
It is a pain that even when you begin to sleep on the floor crying to God, your nose just gets blocked because you have been crying and you have tears just burning your cheeks and you're asking God, until when? But today I want us to tell God, Baba, this thing that I am going through, I completely surrender it to you. I completely surrender myself to you, Baba. And whatever you want to do through me, Baba, I say yes to your will. I give you my pain. You alone can change it to power. This pain I am going through is so that my family members will never go through it. That the generations for generations that come after me will carry great power over death, great power over the cycles of diseases there is someone who I see there is a cycle in your family there is a disease that affects your blood and it is passed down from family members say yes to this assignment and tell God this cycle will end with me, I will carry this pain Baba because I know I have you and there is victory that is guaranteed at the cross I say yes. And Baba, I will no longer complain, but I will stand on your word. And I will stay in this place of prayer as you build my character, as you take me through the spiritual realm, warring. And Baba, I know everything that we will overcome together, you and I, I will have power over it I surrender I surrender Baba because I want to look like you I want to think like you and so any area Baba in my life anything in my life that does not look like you I give it to you oh God anything that I am holding on to I give it to you the pain and asking you, oh God, why me? I no longer ask why me. I say yes me. Yes me, Baba, use me. Yes me, Baba, if it is going to take that my name be taken down, that I will be stripped of everything so that I can carry your power, Baba, I say yes so that my children will never go through what I am going through so that this nation will never go through. Oh, Baba, I say yes. I say yes. I carry the cross, Baba. I put myself aside, my pride, my thoughts, my comforts, and I say yes to your will. If you decide that this cup cannot pass, Baba, I still say yes. I love you. I will still wake up and encourage everybody to follow you. Even when I know what is ahead, I say yes, Baba. And even when I'm on the cross, I will have great humility to even see sinners and direct them back to you, Baba. And even on that cross, I will speak of your goodness. Because I know on the third day, the resurrection power will bring me back to life. I will touch the lives of men and women and their eyes will be directed to you. The sick will walk again. The lame Baba will walk again. I will be used for great deliverance. I will be used to expand your kingdom, to preach the gospel to every corner of this earth, to the poor. I say yes to your will. Give us the grace, Baba. We cannot do this without you. Holy Spirit, we cannot utter and say some prayers without you guiding us. All we have done today is to say yes to your will and we fully surrender.